What happened to Braggy? Dead. Braggy's dead and buried under our feet. Rotting down there with the worms. Tell me again why we stay here. I don't get it. You sing to Bear, Raven, Wolf, and Snow Leopard. What about Frog? Frog? The only useful thing Frog can teach us is how to catch flies. Yeah, that's really useful. Just imagine a fat, juicy cow fly. Hmm, I see your point. Hey, Fracky, how come the Orians hate us so much, huh? They don't hate all of us, Waddle. Just you. I was afraid of that. Broad estuaries give the Orion undead easy passage into Sparkfly Fen. A wave of Zaitan's minions drove Hylic refugees before it and captured vast territory. Wild Hunt Valiants and Vigil Crusaders fight to regain control from an untiring enemy. Part 70, yay! I wanted to get back recording with you guys yesterday, but I somehow completely messed up my neck. IRL and it was in kind of excruciating agony. It also means that today it's not totally healed and I have to basically record with you sitting very, very still. But hi guys, uh, lots of stuff has happened with the game um, over the last two parts as we resume our adventure here on Bract, deep into Sparkfly Fen. Uh, you've seen so many updates as this has gone on. You've seen them add gathering stuff to the wardrobe. You've seen them add chairs that we can sit in. Well, check it out. There's another new thing in the wardrobe now all the way down here at the bottom. And while this is a thing that was added in 2018, and in general, we're gonna follow the release stuff of the game, uh, many of the items within this category uh, released before 2018. So we'll just show you this overarching feature now before we run on in, and it might be kind of fun for Bract. So, novelties. With this, we get a new skill we can press right down here, sneaky on our bar, and whenever we hit the hotkey for this, click it or right-click it, we can bring up quickly ac activatable ver versions of fun things in the game. So, there's a new chair slot. And uh, we've got a chair here, which we can equip into it. Just a regular chair. You get this chair for finding all the chairs all over Tyria and sitting in them, which I've got a video on. And now, what this means is when we look here at our slot, you can see the chairs there. And when I press the hotkey, Bract gets to sit in it. So this is kind of great, I think. There's not many chairs they've added to the game yet. And this will be the only one we've really got access to. Look at how small we are as the sewer perch on the end of it. But I really like the idea of utilizing this as maybe we are in story steps and waiting for people to speak. We could just hop on the chair or whatever we like. So that's kind of cool. It's not just chairs, though. There's another category here. This is musical instruments. These are items you can actually play as music with keybinds to people around you in the world. They're awesome. I'm not really a big fan or have used the feature that much, but I have one. Unfortunately, this is associated with a legendary weapon, which we definitely wouldn't have before level 80, so we're not going to use that. Next, there's this category held items, which just gives you things you can run around with. Uh, and to tell you the truth, two of these we kind of could have at this point. That festival that came through recently, the Festival of the Four Winds, well, uh, there's two sides of it. One, an update in Divinity's Reach. One is a new map. I never went to either on the series, but we could, in theory, have gotten say this item here, the Flames of Kryta. It was originally released after the launch of the game, but I figured I'd show it to you guys. And what this means is if we get off of our chair now, and instead we slot this, <clears throat> we can run around with a torch. It's really nothing more than that, but it does actually provide a real light source as you run around. You can see that the rocks here are actually glowing a little bit. And if we were to go into a spooky dark cave, not that hopefully we have any plans to do that, uh, we, you know, we would illuminate ourselves uh, as we went through. So I am going to use this one. And then finally, there's this category. These are toys. And we're not going to touch any of these yet, but there's a lot of fun things in there we'll get to eventually. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get a move on. This is going to be kind of a mix episode with lots of exploration and lots of story, I hope. We've got a vast amount of territory to cover as we find, finally, the southern route to the lands of Ore. And in my opinion the cooler one. This is the one where you get to see really a lot of what the Risen are doing. As you've already heard, I mean, these wide bayos and so on, they open up Zaitan's forces, sort of push through here majorly. Uh, and I think Bract would be quite at home here, having come from the Tarnish Coast and, you know, much of the climate and temperament of the area being similar. So, what do we got? Well, check it out. Some Norn. I love seeing Norn in areas like this. And look, this is a Norn homestead that's actually kind of like jungly themed. It's kind of cool. Hey, what's going on? You've come to a dark corner, friend. 
A vigil is drowning in undead. You'll make your mark by helping them. Go on now. Your destiny awaits. Right, okay. So, <clears throat> what that guy is talking about is an area nearby. In fact, I think if we speak to... Oh, we can't speak. Uh, what does the high look say? Uh, this is what high look called Wartle. You're taking your toes in your own hands if you come around here. Wait, you're taking your toes in your own hands? What a cool saying. Uh, the Vigil can't protect you. They're up to their eyeballs and undead. Maybe you should go protect them. Hmm? Protect the Vigil? Somebody's got to do it. If they don't get help too soon, the undead are going to swarm Fort Cadence and slash them all to bits. It won't be pretty. So what I love... I'll see what I do. What I love about this as Bract is we know the Hylic so well and we worked and organized with them and there's a ton of Hylic activity and influence in this area of the game. It's amazing. So yeah, there is a giant old Crichton Fort over there called Fort Cadence that we might be able to take a sneaky little peek at as we go through. I'm actually still kind of uneasy on what route I want to take you guys through the game uh, on this video. Uh, but yeah, over here to the south, just before we go up to Fort Cadence, you can find all this architecture, these vast aqueducts stretching across the land. Let's actually go through because there is kind of, it's not a spooky deep, deep dark cave, but there is an interesting cave nearby. Um, these aqueducts are kind of cool and I think the idea is that the civilization of presumably humans that built this stuff a long time ago um, may have been responsible for this as well, but it's all fallen into disrepair. Uh, a bit like, you know, Gondor receding in Lord of the Rings. It's that kind of situation we're in. You can climb up. There's a hidden chest to do this and, like, climb around and do the jumps. You'll notice it looks vaguely jumping puzzly. It's not a big jumping puzzle or really an official one, but there is a special chest you can get on your way. Check it out. More Hylic, and here's the cave. Check it out. We can press our keybind, move on in with our torch. Ah, and usually it's guarded by a ton of spiders, but this player has already uh, cleared them out. So thank you very much to that, uh, Mr. Elementus person. I love the flavor text of this. So, so many of the hero challenges around the game are like this. They're points of power that you communicate at. Uh, sorry, not communicate, just commune at. And it's quite often I don't like them because... They don't give you enough detail as to what's going on, but this one's really eerie and spooky and is a big vibe you get from Sparkfly Fen, as I'm about to show you. The dark air re sorry, the dank air reeks of foul water and mold, but underneath is the strong, sweet smell of rich soil. Some earthen force is alive down here, or it's died and will not let go. I love that idea. And we just don't know which we're going to communicate with it. Commune with this place of power. So one of the things that's going to happen in this episode because of my neck is I can't sit very close to the screen or tilt my head in much. So I can already tell that I'm going to misread a ton of stuff. Buckle in, guys. It's going to be a mainstay. So, yes, we got that. <clears throat> it looks like we have some kind of build update. Why would we have a build? Oh, we could just do more training. That's fine. Maybe we'll look at that a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, so we are... Uh, let's go slightly more towards Fort Cadence. But the idea really is to go south more than anything else. But uh, here, straight away, we meet another... At the Salt Flood Mire, another uh, Hylic place. These are the Pogotal Grounds. Further south than Blood Tide Coast and the Hylic we met before. And thus... Busy. Please speak quickly. A little bit more under siege, we can imagine. Why are you here? You're going to destroy our peace, I can tell. The undead will come now, and it will be just like Ashton Lily Island. I think you should go. Wait, or well, this island? What's that? I'm just passing through at ease. Don't worry. Who are you people? You seem a bit edgy. Welcome, stranger. I wish I could say I'm happy to see you, but I'm not. Why not? If you've found us, it means that others can find us as well. If our location is revealed, we'll have to find a new place to live. We cannot let the undead find us. Huh. So you're just going to run from forever? Look at the ferocious op option here. That's your solution. Hide from your problems, you cowards. Wow. Uh, no, you're just going to run forever? If we have to, yes. But we'd prefer to stay in one place and hide. Hawkotal Grounds has been our home for some time. But the undead seem to be attracted to the Zintel Holy Grounds, which means they're too close for comfort. A uh, lot going on there. You're going to find there's a lot of different fractured Hylic societies around. Uh, you need to accept the hiding won't work forever, my friend. Here we got a merchant as well. Good you have met me. Goodbye. Oh, that, that's a lovely uh, little bit of dialogue we got there. And Brack saying goodbye to her. That's cool. Uh, some of the vendors that you find on the Hylic in this map, I'm not sure whether we'll see them, but are really quite interesting in that they sell hues, which are consumable items that coat you in a certain color. Not the same as dying, but your entire body will be tinted orange or blue or green or a very rare one you can find on this map as well red and this is sort of nearly an end game Corteria map so it's kind of a fun thing to get late in your adventure and then find another way of cosmetically affecting yourself many players even to this day still utilize that because the other thing is tonics if you run a tonic and then a highlight queue you can change the color of tonics and even customize how they appear which is kind of awesome 
Anyway, yeah, so moving through, you'll see this is Fort Cadence. It's up there in the rocks. We're at a place called Battlement Shore here, <clears throat> where quite often a pretty terrifying meta event can spawn. Here you'll see we're under the effects of it now, but it seems clear. Assault on Fort Cadence. The Vigil has a plan to liberate Fort Cadence. Speak with Crusader Joanne at the beach camp, and here he is. Uh, we can trigger this. Never leave a wrong to ripen into evil. Why the Vigil? Why didn't you join one of the tribes guarding the temple at Astro Zintling? I have little hope for the tribes at Astro Zintli. It will take more than one race to swallow the dragon. I want to be with the winners. The Vigil is strong, not desperate. The tribes at Astro Zintli are going to die. That makes me sad. So many dead. So many yet to die. So Astro Zintli, how are you correctly meant to say it, we've already heard of. It's a little bit further south and we will be visiting there today. Uh, but yeah, they're all generally fleeing. This camp may be small, but we've got plenty of supplies for those willing to part with a coin or two. Uh, what do they sell? Jezza's Flamethrower. If we factor in the rate of expansion, there's no way we contained the undead. Take this and burn away any corrupted flora or fauna. Ha, huh, okay. Well, uh, we won't use that flamethrower. We've got one of our own. Maybe we can start running that, actually, again soon. Uh, but yeah, this guy will trigger the um, meta, and you can actually say a direct assault or a sneak attack. A bit personal story style, where you get to make decisions. I'm just going to say, I'm not sure. I think we should rethink our plan of attack and uh, just give you a little glimpse of the fort. Now, up there, there's actually a lot of content. Uh, you can go pretty deep into the fort, into its interior, uh, which is a fairly dark mass, mass of corridors and halls uh, with a hero challenge buried deep down at the bottom. There's some festival stuff that you can end up doing there. Guilds have reasons to go in. This is actually, I would kind of describe it a mini dungeon. It's one of my favorite, like, locales, dungeon-y style things in the open worlds uh, that they did in the entire game because it's just that big and awesome. You can sort of see some some hits of it there but you're gonna go up those stairs deep in all the way over here on the map you can see and eventually you can come like all the way inside here pretty great and uh, a recommendation for you guys to go check that out sadly it's a bit too far off the beaten path for us another really awesome side of this uh, meta is when this place gets attacked even the beach can be overrun because Zaitan sends forces from the sea and those bone ships we've been seeing in the story one can actually appear out here in the open world it's called the ash horizon and it's freaking scary. You've got to actually try and take it out. Uh, it's a weird one where if you can sink the Ash Horizon, all of the events stall. But if it captures the beach, it triggers like tons of different things you can do. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Well, the plan is, as I say, to go south. Uh, Sparkfly is a fairly big map. The western shores are of particular interest to me, too. And we'll see whether we can slip our way towards them. Here's some more Hylic. How's it going? The Orion undead have cornered us, driven us from our homes, and killed so many of us. They've got us surrounded. We're losing hope. The Vigil are helping, but our shores are still falling to corruption. Please, help. Okay, well, we can try. Certainly. You'll notice that there's a ton of hearts that it's showing us there. Basically, the way that this area, that, and I think there's a cave I should be able to walk through to get into the back here, over here. Um, the, basically, the way that this works is there are multiple Hylic mini outposts around this giant central one, Astra Zintli. And they all have different meta event progress they can deal with and hearts and, you know, various little tasks you can do for the people that live there. So if you look here, the meta is protecting the Zintli holy grounds and Risen are attacking the southern gate. The outer posts may also need support. So here we are. This is the largest Hylic settlement that you find in Guild Wars 2. Certainly far larger than what Bract was dealing with in accordance of the Order of Whispers way back when. Amazingly, by the way, on this map, you can find the Order of Whispers uh, working with various Hylic tribes. It's kind of awesome. But yeah, if you look, there's a ton of different dialogue, loads of different people you can speak to here, uh, and the whole place can fall to the undead. Seriously, it can. In fact, you'll even see, here you go, look, the south gate, the event's about to be over. The south gate has been well defended. It's still got lots of health. And there you go. They've just beaten all the risen back. Look at all the bodies. Look, there was a player here doing it, and that's why. The temple is safe. For the moment. There you go. And look, they've got Hylic Flame turrets you can get on that were, you know, we used one of these in our tournament, if you remember, of the Sun Gods. Uh, so, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff to defend these people. If they get through that gate, they, there's like more events where they attack the central courtyard, they spread out. Really fun. Of not any particular consequence, honestly, to the rest of the game, but quite nice. And here you'll see that there's lots of different ty types of Hylic hanging out as well. So we've got a red one here who's actually allied. We do not normally trust outsiders. We are putting our trust in you. Don't fail us. Uh, I can't fight, but I try and help in whatever ways I can. 
I've been decorating the temple and beseeching Zintal to look on our struggles with favor. You printed these designs here? Yes. I can only pray that Zintal looks down upon my work with favor and helps in our struggle. I hope he does. And like, look, you can do crafting. These NPCs can die. And a weird bit of trivia, if they do die, I think you have to use stuff like Elixir R and Resurrection Skills to get them back up. Bit of an odd one. But it's almost like a hub where you can do things. A bit like what we saw with Scritzberg a long time ago and their struggles against the Destroyers. Uh, there's these people, but I loved the, some of the dialogue and writing about them here. Uh, for example, this, this temple in the center we can go into, I'll show you. But if you look, there are some Silvari around. And what you'll find is they've been called the, the Wild Hunt Valiants, really. And they've been uh, sent to this place. Uh, I think it's the ones on the inside, maybe? Yeah, listen to these two. You've got Lorne. Here you go. There's another event going on with one of the other outposts right now. I've been watching the undead for a while now, and I'm concerned. And you get a beautiful insight into the Silvari's understanding of the past and how they get weird glimpses through time of things. Look at this. I've been watching the undead for a while now, and I'm concerned. No matter how many we kill, they continue to rise from the depths. Or was a vast city, and we learned that the dragon's followers have the ability to create more. A bit of a weird incongruence there. Or wasn't a city, it was a nation that we can kind of imagine being so grand and wonderful that it's like a megapolis, right? Like it's just full of cities all over. But it itself wasn't really a city, but maybe we could just say this is a new Silvari who doesn't really understand, and Bract is being a know it all. Yeah, I like that. Uh, you don't think that the undead are infinite, do you? Infinite. Ventari's hooves, I hope not. That's the most terrifying thought I've ever had. No, I prefer to keep hope alive and believe that we will reach the end of them. It'll be a long road to hoe, however, and we must do all in our power to outlast them. Well, what do you recommend we do? It's heroes like you who will change the direction of the wind. At every turn, you fight the dragons and their minions. I got the bloodstain off the wall. Good. I cut up the bodies and disposed of them in the bay. Gross. Okay, it's not easy work here. You're tenacious like the dogwood and dangerous like the cactus. You are already doing what must be done. Thank you very much, Lorn. And then Alma here, I think, is the really cool one. I saw this place in my dream many years ago. Oh, damn. I think we missed something they were going to say. These guys are actually patrolling up the temple. Yeah, because it's a huge room. You can climb up there and go up to that jewel up there. There's no reason to, but it's kind of cool up there. Uh, sorry. Hunting. Um, I saw this place in my dream many years ago, prior to my awakening, and I've never forgotten it. It haunted me until the day I arrived on the shores of this island and knew that I'd found my duty. You foresaw defending the island? Not exactly. What I saw in my dream was this island as experienced by other Silvari. I saw the past, not the future. And yet, this island has been endangered ever since the Rising of Ore. Not much has changed. Except the high look have become weak. Oh, listen to that. I think I'll say that. Something about that dialogue really crystallizes in my mind the idea of these people living here for a long time and just being worn down. You know the priest hates walking across a dry, dirty floor. Yep. Is <laughs> this guy refusing to clean? Uh, the high look are weak. What do you mean? The Hylic tribes in this area have been besieged by undead for a long time. They fought and died bravely. Only a fraction of their warriors and citizens survives. They've congregated here to put up a final defense. It's sad, don't you think? Sad? According to legend, a human shaman destroyed Ore to keep out the cat people known as the Char. If that's true, then he doomed us all to a lifetime of sorrow, pain, and early death. That's not sad. That's tragic. I see your point. I love what this Silvari says. Oh, really think about this, guys. If Vizier Kilbron did not read from the Lost Scrolls, if the humans in Or allowed themselves to be conquered by the Char, or alternatively, I guess, managed to beat the Char without using dirty tricks, if you would even consider that, Or would be a running, powerful nation still. The Char, still fueled and perfectly okay with using magic, let's remember the Char of that point, would have stormed ore, stormed its vaults, learned of its magic, learned of its ways, all the inherent power there, and you would have a ridiculous nation of Char living down here, not in a shattered peninsula that is sunk to the bottom of the depths. It, everything would be fine there. Then, when Zaitan rises later, he'd rise into possibly one of the most deadly, dangerous centers of civilization. Magically infused, capable Char, who would have ferociously tore his throat out. Possibly. And, uh, you know, so you, this Silvari sees that and kind of says, oh, it's all about Vizier Kilbron, which is kind of amazing. Who knows, guys, as Brack goes further south, maybe we'll hear a little bit more, learn a little bit more about this side of the story about Vizier Kilbron. Have you brought train? I am hardened. I have baked in Zintel's light, but it no longer softens me. I've seen too much death, too much slaughter. 
I'm ready for this tragedy for be to be over. You lost many of your tribe's warriors. More than survivors have fingers and toes. We are reduced almost to extinction. My tribe was once the greatest, the strongest, and the most handsome of this region. Now we are shadows of ourselves. We cringe in fear and fight with desperation. Well, I cut up the bodies and disposed of them in the bank. What tribe is yours? The Bogotal tribe is my tribe. It has survived for thousands of years. I tell myself we will continue to survive and yet this entire world is in danger. The dragons seek to consume it all and we will be the meat in the soup. That's why we must stop them. Good luck. Look at how great this is, man. It's really dark in Sparkfly Fen. So there you go. Uh, if you're wondering, oh, they've, the Bogotal tribes lived for thousands of years. Were they referenced in the original game? Unfortunately, no. This is the first we hear of the Bogotal tribe. Uh, but yeah, so just a little bit of a, a look into there, guys. Now, another really fun thing you can do here with the crafting and some of the vendors is you can buy recipes for a special weapon set known as Beaded Weapons. Then I figure, hey, since we've visited these guys and Bract knows the uh, Hylix so intimately, why not change our horrible inquesty stuff to the beaded stuff? So there you go. This is Hylix stuff. It's kind of weird to think of a Hylix pistol. Um, but hey, maybe we can we can think of it as all chemical or whatnot. But it's a really interesting shield. I think there's a lot of very cool, strange shield designs in Guild Wars 2. Most people don't truly appreciate. But yeah, the beaded one I quite like as well. Uh, and yeah, there's kind of a... It's a really weird area of the game, honestly. Because there's like a whole currency specifically for crafting those that you don't use anywhere else or for any other reason. Uh, so yeah, this hunter might be selling the hues. Note, that's a Hylic poison pot Goodbye. we could buy. Uh, and yeah, so we're going to go further south from these guys now. Uh, they seem to be in good hands. They've been getting defended uh, from the players in the area just fine. And we want to figure out what we're going to do. Well, there's a scout here and a small outpost here and a scout here. Let's do all three of those. And then we're going to go through the heart of the region and find a really cool, creepy area of ruins. More knowledge for me. Okay, Bragg, chill out. A signal fire as well. We can like, there you go, guys. We did our part. Let's go. So look here at the sunken ruins under the water. It's beautiful. And of course, crate around. You could even go down to that. Oh, let's try and do it. Let's try and get that hero challenge. Hello? Don't mind me, crate. Check it out. It's an Orion tomb. This is sunken Chaladine, it's called. Oh god, the crate are aggroing on me here. So yeah, there's a, a freaking Orion tomb here. That might be a suggestion that some of the stuff you see nearby as well, like Fort Cadence, is also Orion in nature. But I don't think that's particularly true. But think about this, guys. Basically, what the devs are saying is, look, all was nearby. The people of all did extend their territory to a reasonable extent. And up here, there is actually a very old, very much still in the depths, tomb of this. And we can commune with it. The name on this Orion tomb has long since faded. But the epitaph remains... May those who come to pay their respects to this fallen soldier and son be blessed with good fortune and mercy. Look at how nice and pleasant the people of all seemed. Ah, oh, and, and thoughtful. There you go, lovely. You can imagine this just on like a hilltop, surrounded by roses or white lilies or something. And uh, people would just come. Beautiful. All right, okay. So let's go get this scout as well. And now look at it. Look at what disrepair it's in. Risen Hylic and Crate just swarming around it in the briny deep. We discovered ruins with impressive treasure just floating around. Help us salvage some of it, and you'll get a fair share. So here's one of the places I wanted to show you guys. Uh, this being Forvar's waypoint, a group of pirates and people hanging around. We got Mate Watt here. Why join the Navy if you can be a pirate? It's very rare Asura dialogue there. Gak, don't talk to me. Can't you see I'm in the midst of surveillance? How am I supposed to know that? If you were as observant as I am, you'd appreciate the slight narrowing of my eyes, which indicates a keen interest in something nearby. What are you watching? I shouldn't have to tell you that, but I, I'm nothing if not generous. Why? Because I'm an Asura as well? And you think more of me? There is a shadow over there. I've been watching it, and I believe it has ma malicious intent. Don't look! I'm waiting for it to make its move. I Okay, I won't interfere. A shadow? We just walked near there, though. We got Admiral uh, Snap. I had my fill of pirates growing up in Apple Nook Hamlet. That's not the Lion's Arch. It's where I'm from. I never expected to run into them out here, too. Check it out, Apple Nook Hamlet. We've been there. That is where we dealt with all the stuff to do with Tibble and Demi. This is where we're looking for Demi. Remember Apple Nook? And of course, there were lots of pirates there. We dealt with pirates there as well. Believe me, Bract is a kindred spirit. What kind of pirates are they? The killing kind. They tear through from time to time, spreading their piratey unhappiness all over everything. Good to know. See you later. Okay, cool. So... Uh, and then his no, Moa parrot right there. 
that, that's those guys. Then we got another scout to the south and a very cool tower. We just found an Orion building at the bottom of the waters. Well, what's the odds that the Orion's built more stuff out here too? Even though we're not technically in their land right now. I'm concerned the crate will take advantage of the confusion created by the undead. Make sure they're not up to anything funny, will you? Yeah, we may- I'll try. So another little bit of trivia about this map, guys, as we progress along. This was also one of the earlier maps that the devs revealed to the world through convention demos. So they showed Queensdale and, um... Uh, Blaze Ridge Steps very early on. Later, they did some demos showing off Gendaran Fields, making it one of the early ones. And shortly after that, they showed, or it could have even been at the same time, they did show off Sparkfly Fen, uh, which means that just like Blaze Ridge, which is host to the Shatterer, this map also is host to a particularly big and scary monster. I feel like I'm, uh, we missed one of the things. It must have been a little bit further up north. All right, well, never mind. Uh, we definitely did miss the main thing I wanted to show you guys. But it's okay. We can uh, do that in an upcoming episode. There's no problems there. Right, let's move on into the heart of the map now and show you a couple more things before we get to our story step. Including, check it out, Quacken Village down there. We're not going to stop to chat, but good to see you guys are surviving, uh, I, I guess. Oh, this area is dangerous and we need to carve our way through it to push back the undead. Here at Dry Grounds Village, we have these walls protecting us, but even the monsters living in the swamps get past them. Help secure our encampments, or we'll end up even more dead than the Orions. Look at how many encampments it shows there. So yeah, basically, there's a ton of Silvari down here uh, that are doing what they can for the good fight. Uh, but you'll notice we're in an area of the world now called Aleem's Penance, and uh, indeed, a lot of the stories that we're about to do will take place here, uh, where there's a very cool Orion tomb in the heart of these caves. So let's run along. Look at this. In a really secluded little place, surrounded by overgrowth, there's this area called Ruined Valar, with a lot of undead around that are interested in it. There's a chest standing on the middle of this thing. Aleem's penance, by the way, I don't actually think is um, in reference to anything specific in law. Uh, at least I can't find it. If you Google the word Aleem, for what it's worth, apparently it's some like music musician that was based on YouTube or something. Uh, but what's really interesting about this area is, first of all, the hero challenge, but also some Silvari, who I'm guessing are those dead ones over there. Let's go check them out. They're supposed to be keeping the Risen away from this area, for what it's worth. Yeah, here they are. Hi, guys. Okay, so what is this? They're called Seal Guardians. And you notice, this guy looks pretty cushy as well. Never leave a wrong to ripen into evil. Please, don't bring that thing over here. Protecting the tomb will be a lot easier without a giant monster to fend off. Bring that thing over here? I'm not bringing a monster over. What? Never leave a wrong to ripen into evil. We can't leave this post, even with that monster rampaging around out there. Please, help us defeat it. Wait, show me where to go. Oh, there's a champion that they want me to take out. Well, basically, when this event isn't going, these guys have got some dialogue saying that they were just called by the tree to come to this tomb and defend it. And they don't know why, but they feel like it's really important and they need to make sure that the undead never come to this place. This, like, mysterious, magical, Orion crypt that is just here in Sparkfly. And the devs have never explained anything more. Uh, there's no real events. There's nothing you can channel in here. There's nothing really going on of prominence. It's just, hey, we've got to keep the undead away from this. The secrets of the Orion's... Uh, Zaitan doesn't want falling into our hands, I guess. And, uh, yeah, these guys were called by their wild hunts to come here. And they're even a little bit lazy. They're basically saying, look, we got a good gig here just standing around near an empty tomb. Please don't ruin it for us. Uh, so I've always been curious about that. Ale Aleem's tomb, this area of the world, uh, that is just generally another haunted place with lots of crypts and mystery and, and magic to it. Here you'll see nearby is another Glen uh, with a hero challenge. This is Gilbert's treasure map. A note in the corner of this map reads, We lost all trail of the treasure, and I fear this jungle will be the end of us all. It's seeping into our souls. It's seeping into our souls. Look at that. It's so cool. And here you'll see that these guys uh, actually became Orions. They became undead. But I wonder whether the idea is that the undead influence that claimed these guys actually has anything to do with Zaitan. Because here's a big thing that's going on with the Orion story, guys, that you've all got to understand. And that's the... 
the Orians had a lot of magic and a lot of capability to use magic, but they were doing it in a land that was magically infused because there was an elder dragon underneath them. And so much of what they learned and could utilize was sort of dark magic in theory. Um, and maybe then that's the suggestion here with treasure maps and things like this, that uh, Zaitan is seeking to reclaim what might have been pilfered off of him uh, while he was asleep below the humans walking around above. At least that's my little headcanon thought for it anyway. Right, this is brilliant. Okay, so we are at a very special place now. The dead with no names that bother me most. Someone somewhere will remember them as they were before. Check it out. It's the corpse handlers. And we are at uh, one of many cares. So this is Care Briar. Uh, I think the way they spell Briar there is like. Help us cut through the risen, or we won't get to the landing site in time to defend against the main assault. Is like the old English uh, way of spelling Briar, as in B R I uh, I A R, which would be like you know just thorns and stuff like roses and whatnot and, and uh, bramble patches and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, so these guys basically are trying to hold the front line against the undead. You'll see that they got this wall here. It's crucial that we stop the undead here. If they advance any further, we'll be in hot water, so strategically speaking. Uh, and they talk actually about some pretty intelligent plans to come around and, like, create a pincer or so. I think this person here... Hello, Bract. Welcome to the front line. This wall is the only thing standing between us and the dragon's corruption. Tell me more. Well, the water and land beyond the wall are ripe with Zaitan's undead. They're migrating north and destroying everything in their path. So what are you doing about it? Well, we've drawn a la line in the sand, so to speak. This wall is that line. We refuse to let the vast undead advance any further. We weaken their numbers with each enemy we drop. And there are no plans to adv advance? Of course there are plans. We have units moving west and north from here. They'll form pincers that, if both are successful, will come together to close the area off and make it ours. So they are trying to take this beachhead down here, which is a very special beachhead because uh, it's much like that area of the brand where we found Almora's... Uh, you know, the, the hero challenge talking about where Almora had to put down her warband and later we did a bonus video Let's move on through and it just so happens that our next personal story step occurs right there, too There's a lot of undead. <laughs> We're gonna have to wade through. I love this place. Chokevine Gorge is really kind of nasty, right? Uh, so let's get on and uh, see if we can join them So you'll notice here that this is one hell of a battlefield. It's full of miasma. There's rotten fish heads everywhere. If we walk into them, they'll explode, by the way, and nuke us. Uh, way off in the distance out is the uh, shoreline. That would be one of the shorelines looking towards ore. There are old ruins as well up here, as you can see. Uh, possibly made by the, um, the Orions. This is a Guild World event area. It's called Fabled Janor. There's a ton to talk about, but we'll have to come back later. Uh, we have someone waiting for us at a nearby Asura Lab. Ah, a little taste of home all the way out here. Look at that. There it is, an Asura Lab. Hey, you guys are really in kind of a murky, horrible place, huh? And we're meeting some from the pact here? Yeah. Demolitionist Ton in Tower Down. All right, guys, that took so long. My plan was to finish this mission and do a ton more exploration, but that took so long. I'm going to leave it there before I threaten to do my neck in anymore. Sorry we didn't make much progress today. Uh, usually I try and get a bit further, but uh, tomorrow I promise we will have a load more progress and we will figure out everything to do with Ton. Cheers, guys. Hope you understand, and I will see you tomorrow. Catch you next time, guys. <laughs> Bear, wolf, raven, snow leopard. Bear, 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 bear. Frog. Teach me to be a skull like you. Buzz off, fly breath. I sing solo. <laughs> <laughs>